This morning I decided to go to town and I got in my little boat here and I noticed my batteries were not fully charged. It's not ideal when going to town, but they're pretty good charge and the weather's been pretty questionable today and it was blue skies and I was like, alright, I just gotta go for it. So I got in my boat and started driving. And I'm most of the way to town right now. And I started driving and I was like, alright, let me just drive slow speed. So maybe with the sun coming in on the solar panels, I might not be using much power. Maybe I'll even charge a little bit as I go. But you know, early in the morning, the sun isn't as strong. So I wasn't getting that much energy. So I was definitely still using some from the batteries. But I was like, well, let me just go with this for a while. And then after a while, uh, I was like, you know what? I think I've got an idea for this. And uh, whenever I'm driving, I sometimes grab my paddle here and just paddle for a little bit anyway. But then I was like, you know what I could do? I could turn this into a workout because I don't have my pedals here anymore. No more pedals in the boat, right? So I don't get exercise when I'm driving. Unless I'm, I'm, I'm paddling, but it's not really real exercise. But before, I got real exercise. So I was like, all right, let's turn this into a workout. I'm going to do a hundred paddle strokes with no battery power on. And I do have, I did have my solar power panel switch on. So I'm still getting a bit of power. Here, I can show you the difference. Uh, you can hear the motor right now. It's on the lowest battery setting with the solar panels. Yeah, right now it's just the solar panels. So it's definitely slower. And right now I'm getting, I'm getting pretty good sun. Earlier I wasn't getting as good sun. Anyway. So I was like, let me just, let me run my boat just on solar panels while I do a hundred paddles. I don't know how long a hundred paddles takes. What's it like? Two seconds per paddle? Two. Yeah. Somewhere around two seconds per paddle. So 200 seconds-ish. Maybe three minutes. So then, uh, put my paddle away and I put my, my boat on low speed. To, and then it's using battery again. And I'll do that for, I don't know, five minutes. I'm not, I'm not really timing it. I was aiming for it to be somewhere around the same amount of time as I was paddling. I don't know. It's probably, probably about five minutes, three minutes paddling-ish. Maybe a little more, three or four minutes paddling. Let's say it's eight minutes between each thing. So I do that eight times. That's 80 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes. And, uh, got me most of the way here. Now I'm, I'm definitely within sight of town. I don't know, it's like a couple miles away. And I was a couple miles in, maybe a few miles in, before I started. So I think that's a pretty good way to do this. Because that way, I get to go on the way to town without really using any battery. And with the amount of sun I'm getting right now, I'm pretty sure I'm actually charging the batteries more than I'm using them right now. So that's good. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm at least not using any battery. But yeah, every time I was paddling, it was just fully charging, not using anything from the batteries. So uh, yeah, I should basically get to town having used no battery, actually charging, which is good. Because uh, then, you know, on the way home, I never know what the weather's gonna do. It looks like it's gonna be a nice sunny day, but uh, who knows? <laughs> the weather can change anytime. So anyway, I think that's I think that's what I'm probably gonna do for a while until I come up with a better way to do it. Now I'm just gonna shut up and let you enjoy the ride a bit on low power speed. Oh, right here I've got my little readout telling me I'm getting almost 11 amps coming into the battery right now and it's really nice having that because then I can adjust the solar panels and I can see oh now it's down to under 10 and I can really fine-tune it 
into like maximum power. All right, getting almost 11 there. All yeah, right, it looks like right now I want it fully tilted to the side, which means it's still pretty early. If the sky, if the sun is still way over there, it's pretty early still. That means I made pretty good time getting to town, which I knew because, I mean, it looks like I'm going pretty fast. Well, okay, here's here's my speedometer, otherwise known as a speedometer. This is how I, I check how fast I'm going. I put my hand in the water up to this this first crease on my middle finger, like up to my knuckle, and then I kind of see how high it's splashing. Boy, that's pretty fast. Like if it gets, if it splashes up to the top of my hand, that's pretty good speed for my old boat. This boat is going way, way above my hand. Yeah, this is, that is good speed. I, <laughs> you know what I should do? Get a GPS in this boat, make a little stick that I can stick in the water, have one line on the stick for how, how, how deep I have to put it in the water, and then have measurements on the stick for how high the splash comes off it for different speeds. That would actually be kind of nice to have, although my hand's good enough. I don't need to know exactly. Although even if I just did it with a GPS with my hand sometime, then I would actually have a, you know, a reasonably accurate way to measure with my hand you know I could say halfway up my palm is like four knots up to my the top of my palm is like five or six or something up to my elbow is I don't know Man, I gotta say this is just a beautiful day and I'm feeling great oh I just did that last paddle, that was my 10th paddle. So I'm done my workout. And yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I always, I always feel amazing after workouts. Ooh, I'm over 11 volts or 11 amps right now. That's great. Oh, yeah, I'm just feeling good, man. This, this is great. Oh, I love this. I got a lot of questions about my electrical setup in this boat, and a lot of them really. Um, so I have two solar panels, the rear two solar panels go through this charge controller and then charge the battery. And you know, the battery runs the motor and whatever. And it'll run headlights when I get headlights on this boat. Oh, I gotta get headlights on. I have the headlights. Anyway, and then I, the, the other two solar panels, the front two solar panels, they run through a little switch up here directly to the motor and the question I always get is why don't I just have all four solar panels charging the battery and uh, well one I would need a bigger charge controller so it would cost more blah blah but that's not a big deal I mean I could get a bigger charge controller but the other thing that I really like about it is that I can totally turn off the battery system I can turn off the battery switch completely like that. And now I'm running just on the solar panels and I know that I'm charging the batteries. So I'm driving off the solar panels and the other solar panels are, are charging the batteries. I'm not using any battery. I know that they're charging. And I know that whatever, whatever is going on on the little readout here, they're getting 11 amps of energy going into them right now. But like if I, you know, right now, I'm running with some batteries, I mean, I'm running with the batteries and the solar panels. And I'm not sure how much energy is going into the batteries and how much is going into the motor. 
from the battery, so I don't know if I'm actually charging or discharging the batteries right now. My guess is that it's pretty close to even, pretty close to doing nothing. Um, but yeah, when I, have the, when I have the switches set up the way I do now, I know. And I know I could put a bunch of dials that tell me the amperage coming in from one place and another place and blah, blah, blah. But I, I, it's just more complication I don't need. This is, a, this is a great setup. Plus, if my battery ever has a problem, I can still run on the solar panels. Of batteries I'm really happy with this battery that's in this boat I, I'm, I'm gonna have to do like a time trial to see how fast I can get to town and back on the battery and then but uh, you know today I started without a full battery so I didn't want to do it not starting on a fully charged battery but uh, yeah I'm really happy with this battery it works great it's a 20 24 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery it's up in the front there it's made by sock s-o-k and that company was recommended to me by some sailors actually people in sailboats up here a few people mentioned them to me actually uh, they basically said like if you if you want a battery that that is not going to be a problem get get this get them from this company sock so um, and they've had great customer service too uh, like I've talked with them a few times, they always respond. And they, I haven't had any problems with the battery. I, I didn't have, have to like ask for help or anything. But uh, you know, just had any questions or whatever. And uh, someone from Soft actually commented on one of my videos. So when I when I put the battery up in the front of my boat, there's an aluminium aluminum hinge on the little door like going into where the battery is and I just wasn't thinking like I just wasn't paying attention <laughs> whatever and the, the hinge goes all the way across like it's a piano hinge like one long hinge which means when I got it through there and the battery terminals touched it for a split second it shorted the battery it was just for a split second it just made a little spark um, and it didn't it didn't cause any problems or anything but it, it could have like if I had it if it was like stuck against there for a for more than you know a tenth of a second or something, like it could have been a problem. Um, but someone at at the company at Sock saw that, and they they commented in the video saying, you know, if your battery yeah, shorts, here's how you uh, reset it. Like it won't die. You you just have it'll it'll shut itself down instead of dying. You just have to do this to reset. You know, I answered them. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't short it enough to, to shut it down. It was okay. But man, thank you for for the information. You know, that's. I mean, they're 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 on top of it. Those guys, cool guys. Yeah. So anyway, I would say that I definitely recommend this Sock brand batteries for sure. Oh, I know I'm getting to town, or I know, I know I'm getting close to town now because I'm starting to get rolling waves, which is from this big opening here. So I mostly have, you know, land beside me, but then there's, there's a big opening here, and then I get waves from the ocean coming in. What snacks did I bring today? Well, I put four bananas in my in my bag up here, and I've eaten two of them so far. I've got a gallon of water. I won't need a gallon of water. I mean, it's almost full still, and I'm almost to town. But you know, you never know what's gonna happen. You don't want to get stuck out in the ocean without water. So a gallon is definitely more than I need. And then I brought uh, one of these high energy biscuits. This is. Uh, like an emergency food supply thing that I got off Amazon. And, uh, well, actually, I didn't even get it off Amazon. I, I put it on my Amazon wish list and someone sent it to me. So thank you. And it comes in this 
this tin, this like steel box. It's kind of a nice steel box actually, with a whole bunch of those in it. Um, so that's one of the packs. I don't usually eat them because mostly I just leave them. I mean, it's it's got like 25 year shelf life or something. I don't know. It's it's, it's long 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 term storage food. But you know, every once in a while, I I want to test one. <laughs> but most most of them are still in the thing. Um, and they're just basically like flour and sugar, but packaged in a long-term thing. So if there's a food emergency at some point in the future, I have something to eat. I, I kind of want to have like a whole storage thing of my house, in my house of uh, long-term storage food. You know, just, just in case, you never know what's going to happen. And then just, just not eat it. You know, that one I opened because that was the first one I got. But uh, yeah, I want to get some more of this emergency food and long-term food storage stuff just to keep just in case maybe every few years i'll open one and, and eat it and then get a new one to you know keep it from keep the keep the supply fresh-ish of course hopefully i'll be growing all my own food soon I am, i'm growing more than i was you know i've been planting stuff so that's going well maybe i shouldn't say it's going well it's going okay I would say when it's going well is when I'm like growing like a lot of food. Oh, and just in case anyone else is thinking about getting these long-term food storage biscuits, uh, I'll give you a taste test. They basically taste like, kind of like shortbread cookies. Like, you know, kind of crappy shortbread cookies, but basically like shortbread cookies. They're not bad, totally edible. Um, if you want to know exactly what it is, these are, there should be some of these in my Amazon wish list, which is down in the link. You can look down, it'll be in a green box thing. So, if anyone else is looking for long term emergency food storage, I don't know if I'd say I recommend these, but they're not bad. You know, decent. I've had this one for about a year, still totally edible, so. Yeah, maybe I would say I recommend them. I don't know, they're pretty good. I was gonna ask, just in case I forget to ask this later, does anyone know of any good long-term food storage things that I might not know about? Yeah, you know, I've nosed around on the internet a little bit, but I haven't really done a lot of research on it. And, uh, you know, I know I know you can get, like, I could just buy a bunch of rice and beans and mylar bags and stuff. So, I don't know, maybe I'll do that at some point. The only thing with that is I gotta make sure there's no bugs in there. Because, like, often when I get rice here, you know, there will be some bugs in it. Um, what I sometimes do with my rice is I'll put a whole thing of rice in a, in a big pot and just heat it up kill anything in it and then put it in sealed containers although I mean a few bugs not a big deal I'll put I'll cook rice with some bugs in it just eat them I don't really care I had, I had bug burritos this week with uh, you know just rice and beans and flour tortillas because I was this is one of the reasons I'm going to town right now I was basically out of food I was down to like flour rice and beans which I can use to make burritos and they're pretty good so I did have a little I do have some like leafy stuff like in my garden and uh, you know I dug up some some yucca which is like a potatoey thing like I have a little bit of food growing and stuff I always have stuff that I can put in like spinachy kind of stuff but uh, yeah being able to make a decent set of burritos out of dry rice dry flour and, and dry beans, that's a good skill to have. Uh, I've used that skill a lot, like going on adventures in places where I was carrying food in and I was gonna be there for two months. You know, by the time two or three weeks goes by, all the fresh food is, food is gone. And, you know, it really helps if you can make some, make some, make some tasty burritos. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I've eaten burritos for like a month at a time straight and almost nothing else. Although by the end of that, I'm just like craving anything. Like give me a strawberry, anything. 
All right, back to back to going. Well, I'm still going. You know, it's too bad we can't do a live on the boat. Doing a live on the boat would be great. This would be perfect because I'm just like hanging around. I could talk for two hours driving to town. Hopefully, an hour and a half coming back because. On the way to town, I wanted to conserve battery and basically get there fully charged and actually charge the battery pump while I'm going. But on the way back, yeah, I, I want to use the battery. I don't want to kill it or anything, but yeah, I definitely want to drive way faster on the way back. Oh crap, I gotta pee. I do have a procedure for this. I usually do it before I get this too close to town. Ah, it doesn't look like anyone's around. So I just put one foot on that pontoon and one foot up here and pee right there. <laughs> I stopped the boat though, just in case I, you know, slip and fall in the water. I mean, the boat would just not stop. So, yeah, I guess I can leave it going this speed. I better not fall off. Uh, in case anyone's wondering about my weird wardrobe at the moment, I have a muscle shirt. I just have it over my one side to block that arm from getting sun.